We finally have an update on Jake Lloyd, Anakin Skywalker. And it's been a really rough go for him, having played that role and been Anakin since he was nine years old. He was made fun of a lot. There were a lot of rumors about him going through a lot in his life, as well as him allegedly hating Star Wars. And now all the rumors can be put to rest because Jake Lloyd's mother has come to actually bury the hatchet, to actually explain to us what the truth is. Nobody knows this because I never talked about it, but Devin, Michael, and I actually sat down for coffee for a couple hours. And this was, I think, about over a year ago or so. And if you don't know who that is, that is the runner-up to Anakin Skywalker, to Jake Lloyd's Anakin Skywalker. And we had a really interesting conversation about everything, you know, what Jake was like, and the whole process of trying out for Star Wars. And he's a really cool guy. So I'm going to drop his social media right here, and you guys can go check it out for yourself. But as for today's story, it's a heartwarming one because Jake Lloyd has been, he's been so missed in the fandom. And I feel like so many people want to see him at conventions. They want to get autographs with him. They want to get photos with him. I want to do that. I want to meet him. And someone who's gone through a ton of bullying for liking Star Wars, which I know is funny to believe in today's day and age where it's like the cool thing now to like Star Wars. Back in the 90s and 2000s, it was really not the cool thing. It was the typical American Pie scene where liking Star Wars was dorky and nerdy and you're not invited to parties and you're a geek. So I can only imagine what Jake Lloyd actually went through having played in the film and all the media outlets saying that he destroyed Star Wars and ruined it. May will mark 25 years since episode one, The Phantom Menace, first lit up at movie screens. Many fans are already celebrating the silver anniversary thanks to a fresh round of published interviews with cast members. A new poster and news the film will soon be returning to theaters. Noticeably absent from the recent coverage, however, is one key member of the Phantom Menace cast, Jake Lloyd. The child actor, chosen over 3,000 others to play pod racing phenom and Jedi to be Anakin Skywalker in the George Lucas space opera, turned 35 last week. Since the movie, Lloyd has been mostly out of the spotlight, his life largely a mystery to his devout fans. In an exclusive interview with Scripps News, his mother, Lisa Lloyd, provided a glimpse into Jake's personal saga in the years since appearing in that galaxy far, far away. Sharing her son's turbulent struggle with mental illness, family tragedy, and the reasons she's more hopeful today than she's been in years. She also wanted to set the record straight about what her son really thinks about Star Wars. Jake started having some trouble in high school, Lisa said, recalling the time that she first noticed her son's personality changing. He started talking about realities. He didn't know if he was in this reality or a different reality. I didn't really know exactly what to say to that. One day after school, Lisa asked her son if he'd finished his homework. And he was like, well... I don't even know if I need to do it. I don't know which reality I'm in. And I'm like, well, you're in my reality today, so you have to do your homework. Lisa took Jake to a doctor who suggested he might have bipolar disorder. They tried different medications to treat his symptoms, but she says nothing worked. Jake graduated from high school in 2007 and was looking forward to attending classes that fall at Columbia College, Chicago. His brief enrollment at the private arts school didn't go great. He missed a lot of classes, and he was telling me that people were following him. I mean, yeah, he was a child star, you know, he jingle all the way, you guys remember that too? Hey, my number one customer. She could sense a downward spiral. Jake would sometimes mention seeing people with black eyes staring at him on the street and having late night conversations with Daily Show host Jon Stewart through his TV. He didn't tell us he was hearing voices at the time, but he was. After a semester and a half, Jake left college in March 2008 to live with Lisa in Indiana. A series of appointments with therapists and psychiatrists eventually led to a diagnosis, paranoid schizophrenia. When they finally told him, it totally threw him off into an even worse depression. Lisa said, it was really hard. The American Psychiatric Association now uses the umbrella term schizophrenia to describe the disorder Jake was diagnosed with. It can include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, and a lack of motivation that can impact virtually every aspect of a patient's life. Schizophrenia affects 1 in 300 people, or approximately 24 million worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. A neurological condition called anosognosia complicated efforts to treat Jake. The condition causes a patient to be unaware of or unconsciously in denial about their symptoms. He didn't think he needed to take medication because he wasn't sick. He didn't think he needed to go to the therapist because there's nothing wrong with him. Medicines eventually lost their effectiveness, or Jake would sometimes quit taking his meds, entirely, opting to occasionally self-medicate with illicit drugs. In 2015, Lisa got a phone call from the Colton County Sheriff's Department in South Carolina. Jake, on a solo road trip from Florida to Canada, 
was under arrest and facing multiple charges after deputies said he led them on a multi-county chase before crashing his car. Lisa hired an attorney to get her son out of lockup, but Jake wasn't responding. I tried to call him and he wouldn't talk to me, just flat out refused. I was talking to the people at the jail and trying to explain to them that he's off his medication, but they wouldn't give him his medication. Dude, I never knew any of this. As a mom, you're just pulling your hair out because your child needs help. You know that he's sick. You know that he's not going to get any better unless he gets some medication. Refusing to give up, Lisa kept mailing notes and cards to Jake while he was in jail. When he finally called, she was able to get him into a hospital for treatment before eventually moving him to California. Lisa said it was a struggle getting Jake to keep appointments with doctors and take his medications. He once called in a panic, she said, telling her he'd been shot by an intruder inside his apartment. After a few terrifying moments, Lisa realized her son was actually hallucinating. Dude, I, I mean, I guess the whole world didn't really know any of this, publicly at least. You know, we all were under the impression that Jake Lloyd disappeared because he hated Star Wars and he was bullied so horribly that it just made him rebel. And But the whole time the guy was fighting a lot of uh, mental demons and, and he was sick. Jake's sister Madison was two years his junior. She had also appeared in The Phantom Menace as an extra in the film's finale. Lisa said her daughter always had a knack for encouraging Jake to take better care of himself and stay on track. In 2018, Madison unexpectedly died in her sleep of natural causes. She was 26. He just couldn't handle it. He didn't know how to process it. Bro, this dude, this poor kid, man. Sometimes he would just start saying that he really missed Madison. That's about as much of a conversation as we'd have about it. At least he was acknowledging it. In March 2023, Jake suffered from what his mom calls a full full-blown psychotic break. It happened as she was driving him home after picking up food at McDonald's. Lisa noted that Jake was already having a bad day. He said he wanted to turn the car off, and he turned the car off in the middle of the three lanes, and we were in the middle lane, Lisa recalled. There was a lot of yelling and screaming. Drivers stuck in the traffic jam called 911. The police got there and they asked Jake some questions. He was talking to them, but none of it made sense. It was all word salad. Instead of jail, Jake was admitted to a hospital that day. A couple months later, he transferred to an inpatient program at a mental health rehabilitation facility. He's currently about 10 months into an 18-month stay. Lisa hopes it will be a significant turning point for Jake, noting that he's been showing remarkable improvement with the help of therapy and treatments. He's doing much better than I expected, she said. He is relating to people better and becoming a little more social, which is really nice. It's kind of like having more of the old Jake back, because he has always been incredibly social until he became schizophrenic. Bro, like, this is actually sad to hear. Jeez, I, it's, it's crazy because it's like for, you know, we were both about the same age. I'll be 34 in a few weeks and he's 35. I remember when The Phantom Menace came out and, you know, when Jingle All The Way was out, I was like, man, this kid is going to be a huge star. This is and then he was Anakin Skywalker. And I remember, I remember there was this girl I had a crush on and she was like in love with him. And uh, we all went to go see The Phantom Menace. And uh, I was jealous of Jake Lloyd. I was like, man, I want to be Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> and then he just kind of um, disappeared. And we all wondered what happened. And we all imagined, okay, you know, rumors started to rise that he just got bullied too much and so he just wanted to get out of Hollywood. Fair enough, man, like, understandable. But I didn't know his life was actually this difficult. For his birthday, Lisa and Jake went to the movies and filled up on popcorn watching Wonka. He really loved it. That was one of the things that he we couldn't do when he was off his medication was watch movies. He just didn't have the attention span for it. As for Star Wars, his mother said Jake is still a huge fan of the movies and shows. Most recently, he's been watching episodes of the Ahsoka series on Disney+. Lisa even gave Jake an action figure of the lead character Ahsoka Tano last week as a birthday present. A toy of his apprentice. He loves all the new Star Wars stuff, she says. People think Jake hates Star Wars. He loves it. Lisa is also eager to dispel what she says is a common misconception. That an avalanche of negative reaction to The Phantom Menace drove Jake to quit acting and contributed to his mental illness. It would have happened anyway, Lisa insists, pointing to a history of schizophrenia on his biological father's side of the family. I believe that it was genetic, and his psychiatrist also believes that Jake was going to become schizophrenic. She also insists that in 1999, Jake was largely shielded from the toxic vitriol swirling around this prequel film. Well, that's good, at least he was shielded from it. I protected him from the backlash. He was just riding his bike outside, playing with his friends. He didn't know, he didn't care. Everybody makes such a big deal about that, and it's rather annoying to me because Jake was a little kid when that came out, and he didn't really feel all that stuff because I didn't let him online. 
Well, that's beautiful. That's a good mom. She protected him, man. Lisa acknowledges that high school kids would sometimes bully Jake over Star Wars, something he mentioned in past interviews, but she says walking away from Hollywood had more to do with family drama at home. People say he quit because of Star Wars. Well, that's not true. It didn't have anything to do with Star Wars. It had more to do with our family, and we were going through a divorce. Things were unsettled and kind of tough, rough, and Jake didn't seem to be having a lot of fun auditioning anymore. Lisa said Jake likes wearing Star Wars t-shirts and sometimes gets recognized in public. When asked if she sees Jake one day starring in another Star Wars project, Lisa said it's not something that's in the cards. Jake loved filming Star Wars. He had so much fun, she recalled. I would love for him to get well enough to be able to do a little bit of something, and I'm sure he would maybe like to do that. He couldn't at this point, but you never know how much he's going to improve, so we'll see. We're in a lot better place, and we do have a lot of things to look forward to. Lisa said, we all love Jake and we want to be around him. I just want him to be happy. Well, as one Star Wars fan who grew up with him, you know, in the 90s and 2000s, uh, you know, I don't know him personally, but I would love to meet him one day at a convention. And if that's healthy for him, if that's what he wants one day to go to conventions and meet his fans, because he's got millions of fans out there, man. And uh, I think, you know, a testament to this is how Hayden Christensen has really been proven and sh and been shown like how much people love him and appreciate him now because of how it's the fans that are vocal about the prequels and it's not so much media and reviewers and i think the same will happen for jake lloyd is that so many people are going to show an outpouring of love to see him at these conventions i mean bro like I, like could you imagine like hayden christensen and jake lloyd photo ops like that would be the coolest freaking thing man that like jake lloyd is it, he started it all like, so many people have forgotten about him, but it's it was him who really was the first interpretation of Anakin, and he was supposed to be that innocent boy that you would never expect to turn to the dark side and be as evil as he became into Darth Vader. And I think Jake did a perfect job at that. I think he did a great, great job. And this is something that me and Devin Michael spoke about, is that Devin had a, a little bit more of that, that darkness to him, where you could see it change. You could see it within him already, but Jake didn't. He was the, like, like pure light side like you would it just purely innocent and i think that's maybe what george wanted he wanted someone that didn't have any ounce of that darkness within him and i feel like you know with jake they chose a great actor to portray anakin at that age he didn't deserve any of the hate that he got and i'm glad that he didn't get to see any of it because his mom protected him but if he's going to make a full recovery and or you know a, a good recovery and his doctors say it's okay for him to go to these conventions, man. I would, man, I'd be first in line. I would be first in line to see him and shake his hand, give him a hug and be like, hey man, like I grew up with you, you know, from, uh, with Hayden, it was like, he was like 10 years older than me, right? So with Jake, we were like the same age. So it was, there was it's a different bond. It's like Daniel Radcliffe. It, it's just different when you kind of like grow up with an actor and you're like watching them in movies and on the big screen and you know, they're the same age as you. It's just you kind of feel like more connected to them somehow. And I just always had that. I've always felt that with Jake Lloyd as Anakin Skywalker. And I was like, man, this is so cool because we were both nine um, when The Phantom Menace came out. Or, you know, Anakin was nine and I, I was nine. So it was kind of cool in that sense. Um, I really hope the best for him, man. Uh, I'm glad that all this information is out. It's none of our business, of course. But, you know, she, she set the record straight. And I'm really glad she did because now whenever people want to, you know, say stuff that is incorrect and we didn't know, we'll be able to actually know the truth now. So if I can make one recommendation, if this ever gets to Jake Lloyd or Jake Lloyd's mom, uh, Lisa, uh, I would highly recommend the psychologist, Dr. Steven Phillipson. He's been my therapist for years, and he is one of the world leading psychologists uh, out there. And I think that he would have a lot of good to give to Jake. Um, but hey, that's, that's up to them. I'm sure they got their own drinks and stuff like that. So, um, well, this was a nice heartwarming video somewhat, you know, to know that he's doing much better now. And uh, I wish him all the best wherever he decides to go with his endeavors. And um, I, I hope he makes a great recovery and starts to enjoy life the way he deserves, you know, so um, the way we all should. So, hey, best of luck, Jake Lloyd. Thanks for being such a great part of so many of our childhoods. And uh, man, I wish you all the best in your recovery and uh, may the force be with you, bro.